is Martha Lee's four fifth. So four fifth, and here of her vineyard. So here is four fifth of her vineyard. She left that to charity, right? And how much did that equal to? So if she gives if she gave four fifth of her vineyard. That actually charity received sixty eight thousand four hundred fifty two. Well, the problem is we want to know what how much her vineyard was worth. So obviously the, her vineyard was worth much more than sixty eight thousand four hundred fifty two, uh, because that's just four fifths of it. So imagine something, you know, divided into fifteen parts: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So four fifth, four fifteenths. Sorry, I keep saying four fifth. Four fifteenths is this much. So this much is worth. Yeah, maybe I should use a highlighter one two three four so four fifths so if you if we take your vineyard and cut it to 15 pieces and give four fifths of it to uh, to charity they sold that the vineyard actually got sixty eight thousand dollars worth right so but the question is how much was the total well there's different ways you can approach this so we know four fifteenth of it was sixty eight thousand four hundred fifty two right so this is 115, this is 1 over 15, this is 1 over 15, and 1 over 15. And the charity got four of those pieces, right, which totaled to 68,452. 68, what you can easily, very easily do is just divide that whole value, 68,452 divided by 4, and you get that each piece over here is 17,113. Well, if each 15th is worth 17,113, all you gotta do is multiply that by 15, then we get to find out what the total, so the, the total vineyard is worth 200, 256,000, no, sorry, 256, 695. So that's how much the total everything would be worth. So that's one way of doing it, right? Another way of doing it would have been this. Yeah, four fifteenth of her vineyard, which we don't know the value, so let's represent that with a variable called let's call that x. And we know that if you take four fifteenth of that total, the the, the that four fifteenth worth this much. Now, this is like just like any other one step equation. So let me just go over one step equation. So here's three a equals fifteen. What do we do here? We divide both sides by three, we isolate our variable. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then 15 divided by 3 is 5. So what's the value of A? It's 5. Does it make sense? Because 3 times 5 is 15, right? So here we're looking at a number. So 4 fifteenths of this particular number, which we already know, right, of 256,695 is 68,452. So, but let's just pretend you didn't do this unless, you know, when you set up an equation. So now... What are we doing here? We're dividing, it's no, no different, we're dividing both sides by 4 over 15. Right? We're dividing both sides 4 over 15. Now what does that mean when you divide a fraction by a fraction? So, so we have our original 4 over 15x, and when we divide by a fraction, we're really multiplying by its reciprocal, right? Remember? And then over here, 68,452 divided by a fraction also means multiplied by its reciprocal. So now we can do a lot of that fancy, fancy, fancy. That 4 and that 4 simplifies, that 15 that simplifies, everything simplifies to 1. So literally all I have left over on the left side is just x. Now on this side I have 68,452. If you want to put it over 1, you can, which is multiplying by 15 and divided by 4. Well, I know I said we can, you know, we simplify before multiply, but this is really a big number. So at this point I'm just going to use a calculator. So 68,452 times 15, I'm going to multiply the top, that gives me 1026780, and then we're going to divide that by 4. And it's, and then if we take that 1026780 and divide that by 4, guess what we get? 256,695. So, there is that way of doing it, right? No, the first way, and then the second way. Um, Sometimes the first way is obviously could have been uh, much easier, and that's fine. But the second way too has its merits. Second question again. So Todd is three eighths of his cell phone is used for his tax writer. So three eighths of 
his phone bill. So three eighths of his phone bill, of his total phone bill, let me write that. So can be used as a tax write-off. Not the whole bill, but three eighths of it. And that three eighths equals to 726. So again, you can do this. Here's his phone bill. Let's divide his phone bill in eight parts. All right, that's his phone bill. And I know that if I take three eighths of it, these three eighths, it's $726. So if I know now, if I do know that, I can find out what one eighth, every one eighth is, right? I can divide 70, 726. Uh, divided by eight. I divide seven twenty. Sorry, divided by three. What am I talking about? Seven twenty-six divided by three, right? Because seven seven twenty-six is worth three eight. So if I divide that by three, I'm gonna get two hundred and forty-two dollars. So three eighths is two hundred and forty-two dollars, right? And then um, that means that this. Little one eighth is two hundred forty-two dollars. This is two hundred forty-two dollars. This is two hundred forty-two dollars. So, if I know that every eighth is two hundred forty-two dollars, I can multiply two hundred forty two hundred forty-two times eight, and I get that. So, his total phone bill last year was one thousand nine hundred thirty-six, and the government allows him to use three eighths for him to uh, for him to use it as a tax write-off. So that's, I guess, the simpler way of doing it. So. Hopefully, you'll eventually get to this. So three eighths of a number that I don't know, which in this case is this phone bill, let's call it X, equals 726. Now, we're gonna divide both sides by three eighths, which I'm gonna take the shortcut here, and I'm just gonna say, well, dividing both sides by three eighths really means multiply both sides by the reciprocal of three eighths, which is eight thirds. And I'm gonna put it over here. Which now allows me to simplify. On the left side, I get my variable alone by itself, which is what I wanted to begin with. And then on this side, I can simplify six, sorry, multiply 726 times eight, and then divide it by three, or divide 726 by three first, and then multiply by eight. It doesn't really matter which one. So 726 times eight is 5,808. And is that a divisible by three? Let's see, eight and eight is 16. 16 and five is 21, so it is divisible by three. And X, his total phone bill is 1,996. So, um, your choice for now. Uh, again, last thing, Mary claims 5 eighths of her household expenses as a tax write-off. The tax write-off was 5,840. 5, so this one, 5 eighths of her total household expenses, which we don't know how much it is, equals 5,840. So if you take 5 eighths of this number, right, you're going to get 5,840. Obviously our number is going to be quite almost double this, a little bit, uh, double the, almost double 5,840. So we have an idea that should be around 11,000 or so. So let's do this actually. Algebraically, so five eighths of a number that I don't know equals five thousand eight hundred forty. We're gonna divide both sides by five eighths, right? But that actually means multiply both sides by eight fifths. Multiply this side by eight fifths. That goes away, simplifies to one, and I have x by itself. And on this side, and again, we can simplify before we multiply. Um, but I'm just gonna go. 5840 times 8 is 446,720, which I'm going to then divide by 5, and I get 9,344. So his total household expenses was 9,344. If you take 5 fifths of that, you actually get 5,840. So you can always come and check, so I'll do the check here. So remember, 5,800, let's multiply that by 9,344. We should get this, right? So again, um, let's multiply the top and then five times 9344, four, enter it, that equals 46,720. And if I divide that by eight, will I get 5,000? If I divide that by eight, I get 9,000. 
sorry, what did I do here? I should get, I should, oh, I divided by five instead of my eight. So 46,720 divided by eight, I get 5,840. So that is the correct value. Okay. Um, John owns 120 shares of a stock. He has 100 and stock drops $14.38 per one share in one day. How much money does he lose in one day? So every share, every piece that he owns drops. So we're going to multiply 120 times. And How much did he lose? Let's see. Well, I'll put that because it's a loss, right? So I would, well, not I would, but you have to change this to an improper fraction. So 8 times 14 is 112 plus a 3, we get 115 over 8. Right? And then uh, can we simplify before I multiply? This is easy enough that I can. So eight we're gonna divide by let's see, let's divide by four. Eight divided by four is two. 120 divided by four is thirty. We can divide one more time. Two divided by two is one, and thirty divided by two is fifteen. So I end up having fifteen times one fifteen on top. And that gives me one thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. So how much was it? How much did he lose? He lost a thousand seven hundred and twenty. Mm. Dennis owns four hundred four hundred and eighty shares, and those shares actually gained five and three fourths a day. So with this one, I can actually do this. So it's up to you if you want to do this, or if you want to do this five times three fourths. 480 times, and this becomes what 23 over 4. Would you rather multiply this or would you rather multiply this? It doesn't really matter. I don't know, I don't know if there's an easier one here uh, because I, even if I simplify here, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 480 divided by 4 is um, 220. So you end up multiplying 220 times 23. Is that easier than multiplying 480 times 575? Your call. It's really your call. So since I have this, I have this 0, 40, 24, 5 times 7 times 0, sorry, 0, 6, 5, 28, 33, another 0, 40, 24. So 0, 0, 10, 6, 7, 2. And there's two decimal places. I apologize, I forgot. So he gained $2,760. And then if I multiply here, multiply 220 times 23, I get 5,000, 5,060. Did I do something wrong? Like? 23, what did I do wrong? 80 times 5.75, 2,760. This is correct. And messed up here somewhere. 5 times 4 is 20, 23, times 23, enter, divided by 4, no, 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 give me a second. Yeah, I did that, it's not 220, this is 120, sorry. So, again, good thing I did that. I'm going to back up here. So the final answer is 2,700. Sixty. Um, she buys a car. She makes again. So this again, the back part here, 91, 94, 95. It looks really just procedural. I'm not really going to do this, but I'll go through what. So she buys a car. She has to make payments. She makes payments, two hundred forty-three dollars and fifty-six cents per month for five years. Well, one year has twelve months. So five years and multiply that by. Five and you get 60 months. So she pays $243.56 times 60. And that would have been your. Uh, so if you made any mistakes, was well, not changing the five months to 60 months, five years to 60 months. Okay. And you can. You know, I 
I might as well multiply 243.56 times 60 gives you a grand total of 14,613.6. Again, another car payment, 94. He makes $698.94 per month for two years. That's 12 months. So you multiply this, and that would take care of 94. 95, $56.87 for advertising per week and then if you pay that per week how much would you pay in a year well a year has 252 weeks so you multiply that by 52 90 what was that 95 96 Linda pays 2486 per week for her furniture how much she paid in a year and again that's just times 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year that's done. 97, she can get pencils for $1.15. How many pencils can she buy for 41.40? So this one is a division problem. Um, so we're going to divide 41.40, divided by 115. So let me write that as a fraction. That hopefully you understand why we moved the decimal. So it's 41.40 divided by 115. We don't like to take deal with decimals, right? So, if I multiply the top by 100 and the bottom by 100, I get to move that decimal to over. And that turns into 4,140. This turns to 150. So now that they're both whole numbers, it's much easier for us to divide. So that's why we move the decimal. There's actual reason. So it's 115. So we're going to divide 41. So let's change that and we divide. So, ugh. Three times, uh, this is 345. Subtract some borrowing here, so that becomes a 10. And that becomes a 14 minus 5 is 9. 10 minus 4 is 6. 0. Um, and then bring the 0 down. What, 690? What is it? Five times, maybe? No, 690. Yeah, six times, actually. Sorry. So 6 times 5 is 30, carry this 3, 9, 6, 9, oh, look at that. How many pencils can she buy? 36 pencils. 98, 175, uh, okay, so 175 for the bus every day. He's saving, he puts aside $591.50. So how many times can he take the bus if he saves, puts aside that much money for his travel expenses. So 175, how many times can you take the bus with that amount of money? Let's move the decimal to over. Right, we'll multiply top and bottom by 100, like if you put it in a fraction. Okay. 175. Uh, so times three. Uh, put that. So times three, this is 525. We subtract, 11 minus 5 is 6, 8 minus 2 is 6 again, um, 175, and I think it's 3 again, so that's 525, 0, 4, 1, and then 14, and we get 8, and that 175 times 8 is exactly 1400. So that works out nicely. So how many bus trips can you take? $338. 338, 338 times you can take the bus. What number must be multiplied? So think about this. Here's times, a number that I don't know, multiplied by 15 and 2 thirds equals 56 and a half. Well, let's replace that with a variable. Let's call that variable A. A number I don't know, multiply by 15 and 2 thirds equals 15 and a half. Now, this is not, so let me just rewrite it. So 15 and 2 thirds, A times A equals 56 and a half. This is no different than something like this, 4A equals 12. And we need to find that value, right? So how do we, how would, how would we do this if this was a one step equation? Well, we would divide both sides by 4. And A 
equals 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the number that multiplied by 4 to give me 12 would be 3. So the process is the same except that is in first fraction here. So one thing I'm going to do is change both sides to a improper fraction. So remember it's times here plus 56 times 2 is 112. We get from 113 over 2. And this side 3 times 15 is 45 plus 2 is 47 over 3. So that's a little better. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by, we always divide both sides by the coefficient of, of the variable here, right? So we, we divide 40, this is what we're doing, right? Divide both sides by 47 over 3. But I'm going to take the shortcut, and instead of showing you that process, that step, eventually that division is going to turn into multiplication problem. So we're really multiplying both sides by 3 over 47. Now, multiplying by the reciprocal of that coefficient there, allows for this to happen. This 47 and this 47 simplifies to 1. This 3 and this 3 simplifies to 1. And all I have on the left side is my variable a all by itself. On the right side, I get to multiply this. Um, and it doesn't look like I can simplify anything. So 2 times 47 is 90 something, 4. 3 times 113 is 339. So the number that, and again, you could do a check but a number that multiplies, so A, this mystery number, is 339 over 94, which you can turn into a mixed number if you like. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that multiplied by 15 and 2 thirds equals 56 and a half. You know what? I'll turn it into a mixed number. So 94, uh, 339, how do we change that to a mixed number? Well, we basically are dividing, right? 94 goes to 339 three times. 3 times 4 is 12, go 1, 27, 28, many left over, 7, borrow 13, 57. So this as a as a mixed number would be A, as a mixed number would be 3, 57 over 94. And it sort of makes sense because 3 and a half times 15 and 2 thirds, which is close to 16, does that equal 56? Yeah, sort of makes sense. You can always Use a calculator and check, but that seems okay with me. So 111 to 116, or actually, so 112 is the same idea. A number multiplied by 12 and 2 thirds equals 56. So this one's a little bit simpler. So let's change that. 3 times 12 is 36, plus 2 is 38. So that's what it looks like. Again, we're going to rewrite this 38 over 3. 3y, right, equals 56, just a little better written. Um, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the fraction, which is 3 over 38. Multiply this side by 3 over 38. The left side gets what we want, which is the variable by itself. And here we can, we can do, we can simplify it for multiply. Divide by 2 is 19, divide by 2 is 28. Can I simplify anything else? No, it looks like uh, Four, carry the two is six eighty four over nineteen and again you want to change it to mixed number you can if you left it like this that would be good too um, so careful with one thirteen because it says a number divided by twenty eight and three fifth gives you thirty five so we're gonna write it this way. equals 35. All right, so um, I'm going to change this to a, what do you call, to a mixed improper fraction. Okay, so 28 times 5 is 140 plus 3 is 143 over 5, and that equals 35. Now, this one, and again, This one's a little bit trickier to do. Um, how would I explain this to make it a little bit easier for you? Well, let me do this the long, long way. So, going here, 
remember this is division, right? So x is being divided by, so that's the same thing as x being multiplied. So division, so it's, let me write it like this. So this is what we have right now, equals 35, right? Um, division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I can write x times five over 143 equals 35. And then let me write the coefficient first. So let me just change the order between these two. One five over one forty three x equals thirty five. Now we can divide both sides by five over one forty three, which means I'm multiplying both sides by one forty three over five. Multiply this by one forty three over five. That that goes away, and then I get here five divided by five is one thirty five divided by Five is seven, and finally I get that. Seven times three is twenty-one. Goes to twenty-eight thirty. Final answer: one thousand and five. So one thousand and one. So one thousand and one divided by twenty-eight. Let me just see that. One thousand and one divided by twenty-eight point six is thirty-five. Okay, so that's correct. Another number, let's call that M, divided by 15, um, 15 and 3 fourths. And again, you, you can change this to a decimal if you want. And the quotient is 60. So this is the same thing as saying, let me rewrite it actually first. Uh, 4 times 15 is 60, or 63 over 4. Right, that's what we have. I'm going to change the multiplication, so m times, or by the reciprocal of 64 over 4, that gives you 60. We can now multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this, which is 63 over 4. So we actually get, again, let me rewrite it. And now multiply by the reciprocal, which is 63 over 4. 63 over 4. This all simplifies to 1, which is beautiful. And on this side, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 60 divided by 4 is 15. And I actually get to multiply 15 times 63. And that gives us 945. So M, this mystery number that we don't know, we didn't know before, was 945. So 945 divided by, divided by 15.75 equals 60. And yes, it is. 115, so we have one half of three fourths of a number called x is 60. So that's how you would write it. One half of three fourths of, six of, of x equals 60. Now, if we change that to math, it would look like this one half times, because of means times, three fourths of times again of x equals 60. If you take a half of three fourths of a number, you get sixty. So we can we can multiply these two and turn them into one one fraction, right? So one times three is three. So two times four is eight. So that's what three fourths three eighths sorry of x equals sixty. Again, we can take our shortcut now. To multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is eight thirds. That makes this all go away. I get x, and then I can simplify it before multiply. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 60 divided by 3 is 20. 20 divided by 8 is 160. Okay, so if you took a half and you multiply by 3 fourths times 60, so let's do that. Half is 0 0.5 times 0 0.75 times 160. Hopefully, it'll get us to 60, and it does. So it is confirmed. Next one is two thirds of, so I'll write down, four fifths of a number m equals 120. Same idea. Let's write it as an equation. So of becomes this, four fifths becomes this, and then m equals 120. We can combine these two fractions. We can turn it to 8 over 15, m equals 120. Um, 
to multiply, we can now, we will multiply by the reciprocal. This all simplifies to m, and on this side we can divide 8 by 8, which is 1. 120 divided by 8 is 15, and 15 times 15 is 225. So if you were to check, you would multiply 2 thirds times 4 fifths times 225, and that hopefully got you to 120. Okay, that's that sheet.